I've never, I've never said that, bro. I'll be honest, I've, I've never said that. I've, n I've never asked for that. No. <laughs> it's mad. It's mad that I've never asked for that. Do you know what I'm trying sure to say? You're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating, my bro. Like I know, I know most of these people, and most of them are broke. They they talk about owning a postcode, but the real owners, they're not gonna be seen. No, you can't just be like, oh, I'm a woman, you have to respect me, or I'm a man, you have to respect me. Like, that you know what I mean? Like, what have you done to earn my respect? I remember when the, the seven seven bombings happened. I was meant to get on that bus that went to Liverpool Street because I was oh. working at the time. Yeah. Is, One it? guy goes, if getting married is half of your dean, does that mean if you get married to two women, <laughs> <laughs> you completed your religion? <laughs> Wait, if it was that easy, if it was that easy, I would have completed my religion twice. I would have had four wives. But oh, you're bringing it all back now, man. You're gonna get me teary-eyed and sh. We know we're in the trap. We're trapped in the trap, but we're still trapping. It's it's mad. I've, there's there's been situations where. Well, I, I personally know of where, you know, parents have, you know what, I might have to take this bit out because I'm going to incriminate myself. What would you say to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if you met him? I would say... <laughs> nah, that's a gen, yeah. <laughs> the Quran Lee app. Subscription cheaper than Netflix, encouraging Quran reading, Modern, engaging, and fun. Download it today. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Today I'm joined with a very special guest. And before we start this podcast, I have to say we will be discussing some sensitive sensitive issues in this. I'm gonna start that again. The pressure, the pressure. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I have to give you guys a warning and a disclaimer. In this video, we'll be talking about some some provocative issues. I think it will be a very insightful episode for a lot of you guys who want to know what the youth are going through, what this whole gang banging scene is about from somebody that's in the scene. But my intention behind this is that, you know, a, a lot of the youth nowadays, they find it very difficult to speak to people of knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah, it might be because of many reasons. So because you're known as somebody that's notorious for provocative and you know what I'm saying, like you don't hold back yeah, yeah. in terms of your music, in terms of your lyrics. So. Never. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so in that sense, I thought, who better person yeah than the guy who calls himself friends of the bastard <laughs> <laughs> you know? number one you know? the thing with your your content i think is quite interesting is uh, of course it's just not promotion at all mm -hmm. yeah no 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 not at all because i mean you, uh, you'll be the first one to say that your content is like proper yeah provocative. no it's very it's like it's very you got approach of caution exactly no, you can't really play it around family and I think it's one of those it's like a dirty secret for a lot of people I yeah. think especially you know um, women you know and and especially older people yeah. that do listen to my music I think it's more of like a it's a secret you know what I mean okay I don't think people a lot of people don't openly play it and I find this very interesting you've got only a couple of tracks on GRM daily yeah yeah, yeah majority of your stuff is without a label yeah it's done on your own YouTube channel and you hit that half a million to a million mark quite often yeah yeah so there is clearly a demand for it mm -hmm. your your lyrics are very promiscuous yeah and they're very kind of bait yeah yeah but the thing is people still gravitate towards it you mm. know me i've always been myself you know i'm not afraid to say anything i don't care who sees it i don't care which ristadar auntie uncle anyone you know what i mean i i'm i'm not i'm kind of where I think is that I'm, stemming from it's just i think it's it's growing up i mean because i was you know from a young age i was you know getting in trouble with the police you know i got stabbed on multiple occasions um you know before i even turned 18 you know and that was an age where your parents have to come bail you out you know what i mean mm. obviously they would, they would want to come and help you but at that age it's like they're aware of it you know you can't hide it from them if, if i was 19 and then i started messing around they might not have been aware of everything because mm. you know i'd be able to bail myself out of prison or whatever and i could lie to them but because i was involved with it from you know the age of like 14 15 
and you know always been getting in trouble i think because they've been made aware of it you know my extended family's been aware of it it's not been a thing that i've been ashamed of oh, you know okay. it's it's me you know i don't feel no shame when i talk about whatever you know people can take it however they want you know i don't feel any type of way saying it i would for example if i'm on like for example i'm here on your platform my bro and i've got utmost respect for you and on the basis of that you know maybe there would be things that i wouldn't just say blase like that you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying even though you've you've told me to be very open and i appreciate yeah. that and, and i will be believe you, i will be but it's like it's you have that level of respect That's still true, but true. you know I, and i do have that respect and even then you know even though my mum, you know knows i smoke weed for example i won't smoke weed in front of her you know i won't come blow weed in her face you know what i'm saying bro yeah, yeah. it's like little things like that 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 you don't do you still have that respect but as far as people being aware of it i think like in terms of my you know my family and friends everyone knows what i'm about everyone knows i've i'm a rami you know what i mean or i've yeah. been i've been i've been that way inclined and it's it's sort of normal you know what i mean it's it's natural and i'll be honest i'm not good at hiding things anyway or or lying you know what i mean that's that's quite interesting so you're saying that the people that you were afraid of do you think if their reactions to your lifestyle was different mm -hmm. do you think that would have made you more scared do you think maybe they were too soft with you thing is i i think to some extent i did have a bit of leniency because i've got other you know i had i've got other younger brothers and um i'm the oldest you know what i mean i think yeah. i kind of led the way in that sense and it turned out it turned out quite good bro because you know n none of my siblings are involved in what i do do you know what i mean yeah. they didn't go down my path it's like they learned from my mistakes in a way so i think um i don't think i think i don't think anyone was too soft on me i think it's just it's just environmental bro isn't it mm. i think that's what it is it's the you know environment people that i was around at the time growing up um certain things become normal and um I think you know I moved out of home quite young not not because I had to it was by choice you know what I mean not no one made me move out but what age? it's the first time I moved out of probably about 15 I was still in school bro so how did your parents even allow you to move out of the thing is they, they slightly they didn't bro they didn't I mean it wasn't it's like I was out you know my, my friends it gets to a point where you get to a certain age and it's like you're just out in it like my mum at the time um Obviously, my mum's always was. My mum's always been onto me, you know. Alhamdulillah, my mum's a, a good, God-fearing uh, Muslim woman, and she's always done the best for me. You know, my other brothers. You know, what I mean, same with my dad as well. But it's like um, you get it gets to a point where no matter what they do, as a parent, no matter what you do, it's it's not going to affect anything. You could be hard. I think the harder a parent is, you know, the the worst it's going to be. That's what I was thinking. You get I was me? thinking maybe like, a few jutia here and yeah, there. Yeah, jutia. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, man got that. You know, man got the jutia. Man got the the doi. You know what I mean? Like, man got all of that. But it was like didn't do anything. It doesn't really do anything, bro. Because like, w w w like after you've got the juti a few times, what next? Mm. Do you get me? It's like you know, start bunking school. Cool. Like you get in trouble a few times, and then it's it's you know what's gonna happen after that? You know, it's not like Matilda where you're gonna get put into the chokey or you're going to yeah. get spun around and thrown out the window do you get me yeah or it's, that's not really going to happen so i think we're not growing up you're not really scared because apart from a few slaps here and there you know what i mean and, and a little telling off we get away with it in it i think growing up especially in in britain growing up in england you know today's day and age there's a lot of you know even laws around it now in it but growing up you know we still got licks but you're not really afraid of that you know that's as far as it's gonna go what 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 next you can tell i can oh no don't do this but then i'm shoving you know devil's dandruff in my nose do you get me bro <laughs> like <laughs> he, do you know what i'm saying he told me about this apparently cocaine is called devil's dandruff devil's dandruff <laughs> the shaitan's flaky scalp do you get me <laughs> man it's for a reason as well man that that stuff is 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 not good but but yeah with i think with children like it's just an ongoing thing, isn't it? Like, why you said that stuff's not good. Why is it not good? It makes you feel good. It makes you forget your problems. No, it's it makes you feel good for a limited amount of time, especially you know cocaine. Is that enough, though? It's not enough because then it's how you feel after. Do you get me, bro? It doesn't just. It's not a good feeling, and that's it. You exchange that good feeling, that 
that 10 minutes of joy is going to be followed with you know 10 hours of depression yeah and you seem like par- exaggerating yeah, no 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 honestly bro it's like if i if i sniff the line now yeah i'd be top of the world for 10 minutes please after don't. that 10 oh, no, i want i want <laughs> but after that 10 minutes those 10 minutes you don't have to worry about it's after that all i'm going to want to do is more because that high is gone now mm. i'm not going to be interested in what you're saying i'm not going to be interested in none of this my brain is just going to want that because it's a psychological thing as well you know it's, it's a psychological drug so your body doesn't need it but your mind thinks it needs wants it do you get me bro okay. and it's 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 hard to explain but it's 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 a vicious cycle bro it's like and the more you do it the less you get of the good effects because you build up a tolerance over the years mm. you know what i mean you start damaging your body you start damaging your nose you know what i'm saying start blowing out bits of cartilage oh, wow. nasal lining oh. starts eroding do you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, wow. you know, we've seen that Samantha from EastEnders years ago. She lost the middle bit of her nose. That's no. that's a regular thing, bro. Like, you know, I, I know a guy that can put a paper clip in this nose and pull it out the other nose. Wow. And he's probably just like a year or two older than me. Is he like in a circus now or something? I haven't, the thing is, I haven't seen him for a while, but like, hopefully he's all right. But it's like... He can probably start his own show, isn't he? Probably, it? yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a magician, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So... When did you feel like your life started taking a different turn? And what do you think caused it? And what time roughly do you think it was? I'd say from the age of like, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. That sort of age, because, you know, you're, you're, you're easily led at that age as well. Do you know what I mean? You're a bit naive, you know, you're eager to learn and try new stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think around that time, there was, a, you know, a few problems at home, you know, mum and dad stuff like that which you know gave me more freedom you know because you know mom and dad are splitting up periodically there's there's problems at home it's mm-hmm. like you kind of slip through the net sometimes okay. do you know what i'm saying so and and because you know because there is that kind of stuff going on you start getting more leniency as well you know from mum. so like if you're living at home with mom and dad um you're gonna have a more tighter regime do you get me mm. if it's just your mum, and then yeah. she's got to look after you know other your other brothers as well she's not going to have that much time just to focus on you okay do you get me so i think yeah right there was around that sort of there was a there was a time where i was you know going out with you know the wrong crowd and sort of just got led down the wrong way but i think it was around that age bro you know when you're hitting puberty yeah and you know moving around i was getting kicked out of schools i got kicked out of a couple of schools so you're you're moving around you're unsettled or, you know, you're you're going to different schools trying to fit in. Not not that man had to try in it, but it's like, you know. What was it about schools that didn't appeal to you? Because a lot of people say that. Mm. I think thing is, yeah. Now that I've got older, even like there's a lot of things I'm interested in now that I would have like in school. I would have taken certain things more serious, or like history, for example. Yeah. yeah. Like now, as I've got older, you know, I love. Um, researching history yeah. and knowing about you know the real history even though let's be real in school they don't teach you the real history mm. they teach you parts of what they want you to know facts you know mainly they'll teach you about you know holocaust american west they call it they don't call it the you know genocide of the you know indigenous people of america mm. they call it the you know the american west and and all this stuff and they they, they do teach you little bits but they, they don't really show you about the numbers and the reality. And then they, the 99% of what happens in the world, you're not told about it. Do you get me? I didn't expect you to be um, uh, kind of drawn towards this stuff. Like, no, I am. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested what, in... What kind of got you in, into it? I'll be honest, it's just the, that, that, you know, wanting to know where we come from. A lot of what we've been told is not true, you know, yeah. in school in terms of like history in general oh those are facts facts absolute facts and you know like i said we're we're not told the rule the scope of it like now for example you know they, they always they, they people always push what what they want you to know about they, they won't tell you in school about how trillions of pounds were stolen from india during you know british occupation yeah. you know the queen literally this country was probably built on on the wealth from our country Mm. you get me 
and you know the railways were built just so they could transport that wealth out <laughs> you get me? the only thing that that the british empire left us you know the dodgy railway but other than that it's like no one knows about the massacres that happened you know what mm. i mean no one knows how many you know bengali brothers and sisters were left to starve how many millions died because churchill basically let you know let them yeah you know what i'm saying but then we've got big statues of my man all over the place do you get me fam True. it's like it's you don't, you don't learn about this stuff and it, i think so it was that that there's that want me wanting to learn myself it's like people try and force stuff on you yeah and it it doesn't work because it might not be what you want to learn even though don't get me wrong bro schools are very important yeah so it might be saying that you know they might have a warped view of history and stuff yeah but that's probably everywhere in the world isn't it people yeah. are going to be biased mm. you know what i'm saying but for the most part the basics school is very important fam you so, know what I mean so you're saying you'd go back in time and you'd pay more attention to history I'd pay more I'd pay more attention to a lot of things like everything bro I'd, I'd, if, if I could go back to school I would use that time to learn even English yeah. literature English literature language math science yeah it's all very important bro even fractions it's fractions as well bro I'll be honest yeah. like you, you can't be a trap star if you don't know fractions oh, you know man. what I'm saying my bro that's the basics if you don't know maths or you didn't go to school you must be the worst trap star out here bro yeah. Do you know what I mean like it's very important What's trap star for the people that don't trap know? star is like a high level drug dealer oh. you know what I mean who's at the you know top of the game you know he's a, he's a star oh damn in a trap the reason why it's called a trap bro is because you know when people are drug dealing it's they describe it as being in the trap and the reason for that is is mm. because you're literally in a trap yeah you're in a mouse trap oh, damn. yeah you're you're trying to get the cheese yeah and then <laughs> do you know oh. what i'm saying that's why it's called a trap so it's crazy how even me bro I always talk about trapping 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 but we know we're in the trap we're trapped in the trap but we're still trapping it's it's mad i, I, I can't can't explain it it's, it's all for the money in it but it's like the gangster's paradox that's that's what it is bro that sh that should be the name of your name <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> what is your most cherished childhood memory my most cherished childhood memory oh you're bringing it all back now man you're gonna get me teary-eyed and shit. um to be honest like i'd say i was thinking about this the other day bro because you know what see now when i drive around places where i grew up it always brings back memories do you get me and i'd say i'd say the happiest memories were just you know just being young and just not having a care in the world bro mm -hmm. you know like not worrying about money not worrying about bills it's not worrying about shaving <laughs> you know what i'm saying my bro <laughs> like when you're younger you're so eager to start shaving and that and you want to grow up but when you actually grow up it's like you want you want your youth back in it you know what i mean it works the opposite way but for me i think the one thing I miss is family being together mm. completely. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Aunties, gosh. uncles, cousins, wow. you know, brothers, sisters, you know, those, whatever, you know, khala, everyone there, mamu, everyone. Do you know what I mean? Together, mm. you know, mum's side, dad's side, everyone together. As time goes by, people drift apart. Oh. People have arguments. Mm. You have problems, you know, family um, dramas and not just that people you know move people get on with their life in it mm. as, as as even as cousins when you're growing up you're always with each other as you get older you know people start getting married you start having children people start doing different things and you might not be in the same position at the same time and i think everyone ends up drifting apart oh, wow you know what i'm saying bro but for me yeah man i'd say i miss being like one family bro like everyone's at my nan's house everyone yeah. that that's a very good answer man I think that that's that's what I miss the most, man. It makes me cry, bro. Like, yeah. I'll be driving, you know, past places that that bring back childhood memories, fam. Where, where I was just running around in the park or playing, you no know, water fights in 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 the flats behind my nan's house and stuff like that. Do you get me? Damn. It's like it's it's mad, man. Would you be friends with yourself? Nah. <laughs> I would. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't. Why not? Because I'm selfish. Yeah. I'm selfish. I think you have to be. In, Do you know what I'm saying? In your industry. I'm a, don't get me wrong. I'm a good person. Yeah? yeah. I'm a good person. I help people. I've got a good heart. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I'm not a bad person. But I'm saying in terms of like, you know, the journey that I've taken and the things that have happened and everything else, you know, 
I've been sold down the river many times, bro. You get me? And as a result, sort of, you have your guard up in it. You become like, you know, you you you, pr- you want to protect yourself in it. So with me, I'll be real like, I ain't got time for friends in it. Okay. I don't like friends stab you in the back. Do you know what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say? So for me, I don't really, I don't trust none of that. And I'll be honest, friends, friends are people that you have to look out for. Yeah, because mm. if you're enemies, you know their intentions, innit? Okay. Yeah, you know their intentions. You keep them at arm's length. They don't know much about you. Do you yeah. get me? Whereas your friends, you know, they pretend that they're family. They'll come to your home. They'll come eat your mom's food. They'll, you know, they'll ride out with you. And then, you know, further down the line, when it's, you know, when it kicks off, they're the same people that now they're your enemies, but they also have knowledge of you. Do you get oh, me, my brother? Damn. Like, they know where you live. They know your weaknesses. They know everything about you. And they, you, they'll use it against you. Mm. Yeah? 100%. Yeah? So, don't be my friend. Like, I'm all right. <laughs> Keep that friendship. Give that friendship to someone else. It's a cutthroat sort of thing where everyone's trying to look to get ahead by any means necessary. Exactly. Exactly, so my boy. And they'll, they'll, jump, they'll trample all over you to get on top. Do you know what I mean? They don't care what, what happens to you. They'll just... They'll climb on top of you and, you know, that's that's what everyone's out here for. Because I'm going to be honest, in the the kind of circles that we're in, people, are they meet for the sake of Allah, they they depart for the sake of Allah. Exactly. So there's not really, yeah. like, why would you stab someone in the back? There's no monetary gain, they're not interested in, in you know, the, it, it's, yeah. it's different, you meet for different reasons. Even exactly. me, most of the friends that I've had growing up, we're only friends because we're making money together. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, you know... Having said that, bro, I've got a few close, close people yeah. that, you know, that have held me down, that I've held down, that are real. But they're very few and far in between. Okay. Do you get me, fam? Yeah, there's not many of them. They're very special. I can probably count my real friends on, on one hand. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, but have, it's because most most times, like, you know, you, you can't always pick your friends, firstly, because it's your environment as well. If you grow up on a particular estate, or you go to a particular school, mm. or your particular religion, you you know what I mean. You're yeah. restricted, bro, because your friend group is only whoever's around in it. So, so sometimes I think it might be worth, like, if somebody is able to. I know most people aren't, especially yeah. immigrant parents, to be, you know, to try take their kids in good areas. Yeah, hundred hundred percent, my bro, hundred percent. Surrounded with. 100 Like you know what I mean you're, you're a better friend to me Than any of these guys have been That I've known 25 years You know what I mean 30 years Never had travel At their house You know what I'm saying though innit? People, yeah. A lot of people they, Not everyone But a lot of people They do Because they, they look at you the same They see you as a threat as well You mean so, Not you <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know With, with that beard on a, on a On a packed bus Then I might see you as a threat No I'm joking I don't, Bro but, I'm telling you bro. <laughs> no, on, on a level though You know you know, Even when I go to, to work Yeah yeah Bro, I'm, my chair, my seat is the last to get filled. <laughs> levels, bro, levels. I was leveling with you. Because I teach at an Islamic school, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So I go with the topi and the mm-hmm. But I'm sitting on the bus. I'm telling you, last to get filled. Last to get filled. No, it's, it's like that. It's all. It's, it's been like that, man. I remember when the 7-7 seven, seven bombings happened. I was meant to get on that bus that went to Liverpool Street. Because I was oh. working at the time, yeah? If I'd that left... Same bus. The same bus, yeah? Trust me, I've got two buses behind. Yeah, I was late to work that day. I woke up late. I'm so glad I was late, yeah. I, I think I was probably about 17 them times, yeah. 16, 17. I was really young. I just started working somewhere part-time. I was on the way there. I think I missed the train. I was meant to get that bus, literally, to... The, the bus route took me from Liverpool Street up towards um, Tabernacle Street, yeah. Old Street, down towards that way. And it's like... Fortunately, I was late, bro, because I would have been on that bus. And the worst thing is, on the way home that day, I got stopped by police as well. I, I had a shirt on. I, did, I didn't even have a beard. I had a shirt on. I was dressed like I was coming back from work. Yeah. And I got stopped. I had no bag on me. I got stopped at Liverpool Street under the Terrorism Act. You and didn't just, even have a bag? I had no bag. I didn't even have a beard. I was young. I was like, I was quite young, bro. Yeah, I was like 16, they, 17. They proper searched me. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Um and yeah, let me go. Fortunately, I didn't get taken out to over to Guantanamo Bay. You know what I mean? Then, um, but yeah, I think like yeah, man. I'd, I'd say obviously, you know, we we have had a lot of stick as Muslims and Pakistanis, especially. Yeah. I think we get it the worst from all angles, innit? When when you were on road, 
Mm. Yeah. Well, you still are, but when you were less mature. Yeah. What did you pray for then? And now that you're a little bit wiser, what do you pray for now? It's mad that you ask that because when you're younger, or when I was younger, I was, you know, I was praying for, you know, riches, wealth, you know, this, that, the latest, you know, whatever, whatever it was. It's like material things. You want material things, innit? Yeah. Um, as you get older, that's not, it doesn't, that does, that's not important. You know, you realise that. You, you realise what's important. You know, family, you know, grandparents, your parents, aunties and uncles. You know what I mean? That sounds and like a cliche though. It's true though, bro. It's true. And it's like, like, thing is, bro, man's had it, it will win it. You, you have it. You make money, you lose it. You know, we, we drive cars, we, we buy fancy watches, Rolexes and this, that. Richard Millies or whatever the hell that they, they're on now. Do you get me? But ultimately, we're not taking that stuff with us. Do you get me? And all the time that we waste chasing that, it's time that we're wasting spending with our, you know, parents, our elderly grandparents. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Annoying though, isn't it? Like, a lot of people watching will be like, he, what, are you, what are you saying? Like, stay at home, be with family. They're very annoying. It's, it thing is, yeah, everyone thinks that, but... When you're when you've walked where I've walked, where you've gone, the places that I've been, and the thing, and you've seen the things that I've seen, you start appreciating that. Do you get me, my bro? Like, you you start appreciating family, you start appreciating all the things they said to you, because it was all true. Do you get me, fam? Everything, all the times that my 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 grandma was giving me a lecture about money and about this and about saving, and like my grandparents will spend hours, yeah debating which is the cheapest store to go to like Lidl Audi or oh, I paid 20p the again I paid 25p the again punch penny you know what I'm saying yeah. but it's so important fam You're like all these little things you take for granted but it's so important do you get me even down to like saving money you know being you know being smart with your money stuff like this you know we don't listen it's kind of reality. interesting because you went straight to grandmother yeah while some people they say you know what I can't speak to my parents they don't understand mm. they don't understand what it's like <laughs> being on road they don't understand the struggles bro they understand more than us fam because you know when our grandparents came here for example yeah like when my granddad came here whenever he did in the 1960s he struggled more than any of us have probably do you know what I mean he, he, they experienced racism they, ex they, they had to build up from nothing you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, when we're alive, we already have it all there, innit? More or less, we have a roof over our head, we have Karnashana, whatever. You know, my granddad, you know, he was an orphan. Yeah, he came here on his on his own, fam. He built up everything he had from, you know, his on his own back. Do you get me? And I think it's, it's you know, they had it the hardest. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? I think we've got it quite easy now. I think, like, nowadays, we've got it a lot easier than they had. We've got all the opportunities, but we just don't, we don't use them or, you know, we're just too distracted. There's too many distractions now, I think, as well. I think our biggest concern is just taking the bins out on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for us, we have our own struggles. Yeah. Like living in, you know, the 21st century, we've got our own, you know, distractions. You know, they didn't have internet. They didn't have access to, to all this information back mm. then. Do you get me? And it's very easy to misuse it or, you know, be... You know, all it takes is an advert to pop up on your screen. Do you get me? You know, you could be playing the game and then, you know, a woman just pops up on your screen and it's trying to distract you, you know, click here, you know, you yeah, know, girls yeah. in your area or whatever. They just pop up in your face, you know. Yeah. Adverts just pop up. People always trying to sell you something. You can't escape it. That's a GB. You know, you can't, bro. So, it's mad, man. It's, it's I, d I don't know, man. There's there's one one question that I was actually thinking, but I was like, how how do I ask this? Swear words, they they evoke a lot of emotion. There's uh, there's a lot of intentionality behind it. For you, what was that cross? What made you think? You know what? I'm going to use these words in Punjabi. Mm -hmm. They're the same words, but I'm going to use them even though they're very um, they're they're very contentious. Yeah. Well, what, what it is, yeah. yeah. Be, sorry to interrupt you, but what it is, yeah. See the words that I use? These are words that an Asian family will be no, using regular, bro, yeah, yeah. every day. Yeah. But what made and, you think, and, you know what? I'm, I don't care, I'm going to do it. Bro, it's just part of me, innit? 
it's part of me growing up. Do you know? Like, you do something bad, like, oh, Rami, oh, Rami, like, yeah. like, you know what I mean, Lala? It's like, it's, it's, it's our language, isn't it, bro? So, it's, it's, I'm, I'm just saying things that I've been hearing growing up, words that I've used, words that we use every day. Mm. But it's, because I'm saying it on a recording with some music behind it, people just take offence to it. Yeah. Do you get me? There'll be women driving, there's a song, bro, worst thing is, I was listening to a song the other day and it was a remix of a, of an Indian song, yeah? They're very popular. This song plays in Mendy's all the time, bro, yeah? And part of the song, the there's a guy in the background over the Indian lyrics saying something about um, turn up the punani or something like that. He's repeating it in the background. And bro, there's probably aunties to this day dancing to that song, yeah? But they don't even know what the guy is saying in the background. He's saying something about something, touch up the punani or something like that, lola, yeah? And like, Customer, bro, these aunties will be dancing all night to it. But right. put me on a song, if I say the word Puda or something, yeah, or whatever, <laughs> automatically, bro, is a, there's an uproar. Do you get me? Backlash. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get it, fam. It's just mad. And I think it's just, it's just like, people take it, people take it a bit. I don't know why they take it. Being in the industry, how has your view on women changed? Thing is, yeah. I've got a lot of respect for women, yeah? A lot of respect. But again, respect is earned. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't just be like, oh, I'm a woman, you have to respect me. Or I'm a man, you have to respect me. Like, f*** that. You know what I mean? Like, what have you done to earn my respect? You know, you're dancing around the videos with your dude hanging out. Yeah, with your dude hanging out. And you're talking about respect. Like, if you're one of them girls, you're not going to get no respect. Yeah? You're going to get violated. Yeah, you're going to get f***ed. You're going to get dumped. Do you get me? Mm. Probably could, you're probably going to get impregnated The guy's not going to want to know Do you know what I'm trying to say? Let's be real That's You don't get respect Like That doesn't get my respect So I'll be real Being in this industry You lose respect You you see what people are on What type of fuckery people are on You see what girls will do And guys as well You know guys are just as bad If not worse But obviously we're talking about women I mean women I, I, I'd say one thing I don't understand yeah. bro, What Because how, how much would you say To hire a, a woman in a uh, video? To hire a woman in a video, I'd say it depends, bro. I mean, agencies they charge like between a hundred to two hundred pound for okay. like an hour or two. Okay. Do you get me? They'll probably make like you know a quarter of that and give the girl X amount. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Um, why, why, why do they do it, bro? They get treated like crap. They get treated like. Sh- do you get me? And to be honest, I think they like it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Psst, they must do in it. How bro. do you think these people can be reached or helped? I think, you know, the main, I think we need to just start being a bit more open to having the discussion. Do you get me? Because what it is, a lot of aunties and uncles think that they're safe from this, but they don't know what their daughter's up to when she goes to university. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? They don't know, like, what kind of, you know, experiment in their son's doing when he, he goes off. Do you get me? So, it's like, you know, we have to have these conversations. We have to be aware of it. And obviously... Again, ultimately, there's nothing that, you know, we, we could be the best parents, we could be, you know, the best friends or, you know, the best mentors we want. But ultimately, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. Mm. Same way, you can take the whore to the water, but you can't make it drink. Do you get me? It's like, it's, it's either way, you know, no matter what, people are going to do what they want to do, what, what, you know, what they enjoy doing. And unfortunately, it's like this lifestyle is very appealing, you know, to... To men and women you're, you're in an industry where Like you said There's drugs There's women yeah. There's money <coughs> Amongst all of this You still Watch Islamic content mm-hmm. You still Try to do your fasts And your prayers How does one see God in all of this? Well it's a constant battle man And I think we've got to remember Without evil There'd be no good Do you get me? So It's I think a lot of people, especially you know my age group and people growing up, um, you know, in the UK, being from a Muslim background, growing up in a predominantly non-Muslim country with non-Muslim values, um, I think it's a constant battle. Yeah, it's a constant battle between. What stops you from just going off the rails? It's that faith in it, bro. I think it's it's that faith, you know, the the faith in our parents as well. I think that's the most important. Yeah, okay. it's faith in Allah, but also faith in our parents and our grandparents. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and I think 
we've all got it in us even no matter even the worst person has probably got some sort of hope do you get me some sort of light inside him it's just a constant battle you know what i mean mm. for me it's it's always a battle bro and it's like the more bad you do it's like i want to do good as well do you mm. know what i'm saying like i want to do something good and even the bad things that i've done it's not a case where morally my my conscience is clean you know i've never abused anyone i've never forced anyone to do anything i've never hurt anyone unless they ask for it obviously but <laughs> i've never like you know I'm, I'm i'm clean hearted you know i don't wish bad on anyone not even my, my worst enemy yeah so my, my heart is clean my conscience is clean it's just down i think it's down to intentions as well do you okay. know what i'm saying so it's like your intention is like you know i intend on for example i intend on doing good and inshallah allah allows me enough time on this earth to you know get past the bad and start doing more good but i think you know along with everything it's like it's a constant battle in it bro yeah. it's like constantly constantly like sometimes the dark forces are winning sometimes the you know the goodness is shining through but i think ultimately most of the time the the goodness does prevail in it i of think course. i think for the most part because like we were discussing before it's fitter isn't it? yeah, yeah. naturally inclined towards doing good if you think mm. about all these negative things a lot of them require a lot that like you have to go out of your way to yeah. do the evil stuff and then eventually you get used to it, isn't it? a lot of times bro people do evil stuff for good reasons yeah like, like so for example if you know if you're you know if your mum's struggling and you know dad's not around for example mum's ill can't pay the bills can't pay rent that's a reason for a young woman to go out and hustle okay. yeah i want to help her or you know as a guy as a you know say you're a guy and and you know you're trying to go down the right path and unexpectedly something happens and you know you need to make money to help a family member or to you know what i mean it's, that's that's very interesting this though. is why it's, you know, it goes hand in hand sometimes you know why that actually takes place it's because we think that we have control over things mm -hmm. we think that things are moving chaotically mm -hmm. there's there's no link there's no divine power over over this or over our circumstances and we think we control the exactly. outcome in it so that's why we're like by any means necessary I have to make sure. I have to make sure this gets done. Yeah. yeah, but we don't realize that it's in those moments mm -hmm. that that's where true help comes. That's when our faith's tested as well, isn't it? Exactly. In those moments. Exactly. Do you know? Because even, even in some situations, bro, we, we, we hold on, cling on to life. Yeah. When in reality, life's not ours to cling on to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that life that we do give somebody else, it's like Frankenstein, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. He created that monster, but in the end, that monster was he caused chaos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. No, it's true. So we use haram. And to do halal but in in reality that it's not halal it cancels it out in it it yeah. goes against it i think in the end yeah so even if you struggle and that's that's something that i do as well like in certain situations bro that mm -hmm. you can go to to haram and stuff but if you like tense it out you power through mm -hmm. it yeah it sucks yes yeah, painful it hurts like no man's business but when you come out the other side bro your conscience is clear clear yeah and you know there's no no haram like mm -hmm. unless yeah, yeah. Live with less, hang around mm. less. Yeah. But flipping, do what is going to ultimately bring you peace. Hundred percent. Contentment here and in the hereafter. Mm. Like that's that's one thing. I money doesn't bring it, bro. bro M I money just, never brings it. There's one thing that like, even when we were like in secondary school and you peed somebody off and stuff, and you know, or oh, <laughs> that person following me, you look over your shoulder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Bro, I, I honestly I don't envy that lifestyle at all. Like mm. constantly looking over your shoulder, or you've seen somebody, uh, yeah, you're looking at somebody and they mm -hmm. they think that you've looked at them the wrong way. You're in another postcode. Mm -hmm. But this sounds like so much stress, man. It's stressful, man. It's very stressful. I, 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 I honestly, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be any appeal to it. Mm -hmm. What do you think for youngsters is the appeal to that sort of lifestyle? Again, it's the glamour, bro. It's the glitz, the glamour, the you know people they're looking up to on TV. And ultimately, people just follow who everyone else is following. They're sheep, aren't they? Okay. You know, if you know a million people are following this person, it must be good, isn't it? Let me follow it as well. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think people don't. A lot of people don't think for themselves, in it. They follow the crowd. Do you know what I mean? Especially youngsters, man. There's always new trends and this, that. You know what I mean? And I guess raising kids that are 
open to rebellion and being a maverick mm-hmm. not against the thing is you know when people talk about rebellion mm-hmm. it's very interesting they end up rebelling against their parents <laughs> yeah. against their teachers yeah against the people that are trying to help them yeah, yeah. But when it comes to rebelling against the, the system road, yeah they're not on road it men, do you see <laughs> yeah. challenging the government's laws they're not on it bro they're not but on bro, it bro they they they're a victim of the government's policies yeah yeah they they talk about owning a postcode but the real owners they're not going to be seen. Bro, the, the, the mums, the worst thing is, bro, half of these guys, yeah, that are out here trapping, they could have bought their mum's council flat by now. They mm. could have, with the drug money they've made, they, they got, they're getting heavy discounts from the council. They could have bought it. Mm. But instead, they're going to go out, they're going to buy a chain, buy a car, whatever, just so they can get mm. That's why, my bro, I'll be real with you. This is why I think people that don't have religion in their life or, you know, or, you know, don't feel any regard about, you know, getting married, for example, and having one wife. I think, I think the main, the main motivation for a lot of people is the women and the, you know, the power. Do you get me? And being the man. So most of these guys that are driving around in, you know, you see these guys driving around in, in nice cars. You know, Audi. They got nice cup of day on. You know, fresh trim. Bro, the guy probably can't even get petrol for that car. You know what I mean? He's probably had to ask his friends for five pound each so they could get a little score in the tank. You know what I'm saying, Lola? Most of these guys that got the Louis and the Gucci and this, that, and the other, bro. Most of them are Brock. Do you know what I'm, I'm trying sure to say? You're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating, my bro. Like I know, I know most of these people, and most of them are broke. Do you get me? You see them out and about. You see them, and you think they got peace. Yeah. Spend a week with that person, you realize that he's broke. Do you know what I'm trying to say? They just do it to gas up girls, fam. Yeah. See a guy from nowadays. A man will be happy with with no house, nothing, nothing owned by himself. He'll be happy with a nice car, a bit of petrol, and a nice watch to, you know, to attract women. Mm. A guy would be happy with that. Yeah, he'll have nothing in his bank account. Yeah, he'll be eating bloody, you know, noodles every day. Yeah, ramen noodles and that. Can't even afford tuna, but man's pushing a German car and he's just gassing up girls. Yeah. This is what these guys do, my bro. This is that image in it. It's that everyone wants to look like a rapper or, you know, a celebrity. And more time, they haven't got the means to do so, bro. Do you get me? If you were to pass away, yeah, what would you hope that people remembered you as? What what qualities? As a savage Rami. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, thing is, yeah, I haven't really left a great legacy up until now. You know, hopefully I've got some more time to do more good, do more things that I want to do, more positive things, you know, for the community and for everyone really, man. I, I do want to make a positive impact on earth, innit? I don't just want to come here, rap about, you know, drugs and, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll. You know what I mean? It's not all about that. Cool. That's been my lifestyle. You know, it's fun. Cool. For the time being, it's great. Do you know what I'm saying? But there is more to it, my bro. And like I said, even though like, I, I'm still trapped you know what i mean i've not made it to that other side i'm still out here hustling i'm still you know doing bits and bobs i'm still getting distracted you know i have been toning it down you know what i mean i don't do half the stuff that i used to do but i've still got a long way to go but i'll be honest right now people wouldn't remember me for great things my bro i'll be real apart from you know close family and and friends that know me um that know me to be a good person I'd say most people will remember me for the wrong things, fam. Do you know what I mean? There's other things that I would like to do that I am doing that, you know, more people will see in due time, inshallah, that I would like to be remembered by. You know what I'm saying? Giving to charity, speaking up for, you know, the, the little man. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, giving the, you know, the guy up north a voice. You know, the little skinny packy up north, giving him a voice. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to be that person rather than, you know, the, the pimp, packy rapper who, do you know what I'm saying? Who, who who uses some Punjabi swear words in his lyrics. You know, I want to be remembered for more than that. Because to be honest, I am way more than that. Mm. That's just what, you know, the public know me for. Yeah, because at the end of the day, bro, it comes down to choice, isn't it? A lot of things, if we actually go down to it. You've got free will, innit, yeah. bro? It's like you were saying, you, you purged your contacts and you, you, you you're trying to kind of... Um, come on the straight and narrow and bro that's that's exactly it the fact that you've you know we've even allowed this to take place mm-hmm. that we, we've sat and you know respectfully talk, talked about this in a candid way mm-hmm. 
bro i think it's stuff like this that people <clears throat> should take away from this that give give spirituality a chance mm -hmm. yeah give allah a chance give salah a chance mm -hmm. and i think that's the it thing. does work bro you know it does work it, you know it really does work and i sound like a, a, a big contradiction right now saying that bro because knowing that it works and it helps why aren't i doing it why aren't i implementing this day to day you know five days why, why aren't i praying five times a day and it's ultimately there's it's my weakness bro it's yeah. my weakness it's my bad habits that hopefully i'll be able to shake soon and that i'm trying to shake but not only that it's it's the surroundings bro and sometimes it's impossible to escape you know you could purge all your contacts and change your number but the same day you'll probably bump into those same people down the road going to the shop but or I think you know it's, it's, that's the test in itself as well isn't it that, bro? that's where your point of intentionality came in like yeah the, the intention like before you leave you make that intention that you know what from today you know what, I'm, I'm i'm gonna change yeah yeah but even if it's an incremental change yeah but it's consistent yeah yeah could be something small small but it adds up in it if we yeah. if you all start making this this is what i've been doing bro because since i've started doing music and only since i've started doing music bro i'd be lying if i told you that you know before i started doing music i was trying to make a change no i was when i started rapping i was doing the shit that i was doing and i'm still doing it now mm. even though it might be a bit less i'm still doing it mm. you know for me the sin is the same yeah no matter how much you do it if you're doing something bad you're doing something bad in it cool there might be levels we might argue that you know rape is worse than drug dealing which yeah. you know it is let's be real it's in it but there's it's still regardless it's still a sin bro yeah if i sell five grams today or if i sell 50 grams it's the same thing bro isn't it i but, think but you know what bro progress yeah yeah as long as there's progress yeah yeah like uh, th there's a saying rome wasn't built in a day mm -hmm. you know true. cristiano ronaldo wasn't skilling his uh, little yeah, brother yeah. up when he was like messi eight. wasn't dribbling when he was exactly. one years old before he could walk in it you know takes saying? time in it yeah it takes time bro so even even these things that 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 you may may feel as long as you're taking them down bro that bro that should be celebrated yeah like, you know you know what our problem is when we do something bad, we think about it for a week. Yeah. When we do something good, we give it 10, 15 minutes. Oh, you're absolutely right, you know, because yeah. I think the negative stuff does linger and the negative effects do, they do stay with you a lot longer. Do you get and, me, bro? They do why, affect bro. you a lot. And I think that's why somebody in your kind of lifestyle, it's, it's very important that you do celebrate these small victories. Yeah. Because that would motivate you. Yeah. If you think, you know what, I made this change, but nah, un unless I... Bro, you're never going to be able to go cold turkey and hmm. cut everything out. Yeah, so definitely, um, yeah, one step at a time, inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, it, it will work. What, what would you say to the Prophet wasallam if you met him? I would say, you know, I'm sorry. Sorry for not following your... You know your guidelines do you know what i mean following what your example do you know what i'm saying mm. because it's, it's there it's been set out for us in it thing is like 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 we're striving I, I strive to do my best in it and hopefully one day if i'm given the opportunity to live to that age you know inshallah i will be a different man in it and i'll be a better man but as of today right now bro we ain't got leg to stand on bro yeah. even with me like i've got I'll be real, bro. I'm, I'm constantly battling with mm. demons every day, bro. Like, I've got a demon on my back constantly whispering in my ear every day. You know what I'm saying? Every hour of every day. It's a constant battle, bro. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow or what I'm going to do tonight. I might go completely left tonight, bro. When's one one thing and I could just go left. When's, when's the last time after Salah you've just raised your hands and you just said what you just said to me to Allah that, Oh Allah, I'm a slave to materials. I honestly, I, I don't think that there's anything that can take me off this. Mm -hmm. You've created everything. Yeah. Yeah. You're the master of everything. Please do something. I've, I've never, I've never said that, bro. I'll be honest. I've, I've never said that. I've, I've never asked for that. You know, <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. That I've never asked for that. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably ask him to give me that stuff before I'd say, you know, take the urge for wanting it away. Do you know what I'm saying? I'd say, look, give me that new jacket rather than take away the urge to buy it. Just give it to me, innit? <laughs> Do you know my, what I'm saying? My, my kind of worst 
regret would be if I'm standing in front of Allah and I tell him my problems and he goes did you ever ask me that's true that's true and, you know and me saying no no I haven't I didn't ask you no that's, that's true you know bro because he you know Allah gets angry when we don't ask him yeah for, we should ask for help innit and, and I would say bro put your faith to the test <laughs> put it to the test next time pray your fard salah raise your hand talk to him <laughs> just talk to him praise him first send salutations upon the prophet yeah and then bro mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm knee deep in this one day I'm thinking it's like, like quicksand this. bro it's yeah. literally quicksand fam. Well, and the well, more you try and struggle to get out it tell sounds him, bro. cliched bro it might sound horribly cliched and cheesy whatever but it's the truth bro there's no other way to describe it the more you're trying to get out the more you're just getting pulled back in fam and that's the way I'm feeling now you get me even as I'm progressing in music bro there's loads of other little distractions coming out of nowhere now little shaitans little jinns coming out of nowhere you know what I mean in your DMs and that you get me my bro and trying to just even you know in general fam it's like one thing I will say bro is Allah's made it clear yeah yeah that contentment and happiness will only come in his remembrance and in doing things as he's prescribed as he's prescribed 100% bro whether it's music whether it's drugs or whatever it may be or whatever way we justify it bro you will I'm telling you this right now you will come across a time where you'll be like I've had enough yeah you feel, you don't feel like that now but you'll say I, things I do I do yeah. things I do I'm starting to feel like that bro and yeah. it's that those little those little trickles that are inside hopefully they start it starts coming out more in it right. because I, I do feel like that bro bro I'm I'm not gonna and I sound like a hypocrite or, or a contradiction when I say, you know, I want to do this, but I'm doing that. Yeah. I know I should do You're this, honest. but I'm doing that. But that's, bro, that's how it is because I, I know what, what needs to be done, but I probably won't do it, bro. I'm too stuck in my ways. It's it. It will take a while, innit? Hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later. But you know, bro, this, the path if, that if I'm you, on now is if looking you speak good. To Allah, bro, and you take the steps. I promise you, you will get there. Bro, I'm not saying if, but, bro, you will. You will, yeah, yeah. Bro, you will. It's a fact. Yeah, yeah. Allah, bro, Allah does not lie. Yeah, He said it in the Quran. It's a fact, bro. You could you could come tomorrow. My house will not be here. My name will have changed. My channel may have disappeared. What Allah and His Prophet said, bro, can never be wrong. 100. Realize this, bro. Realize this. Yeah, if He has said that this life going against His rules will bring you nothing bro rest assured Mm -hmm. it's like a car that's been temporarily pushed (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. but (laughs) there's no gas in it yeah yeah it's not going nowhere it's not going nowhere it's gonna temporarily go but it's gonna stall everyone else is gonna pass yeah yeah you might be going initially but so that that's the thing bro and what the 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 stuff that you said to me is quite profound it's very honest Mm -hmm. but bro you you have to Mm -hmm. it's like we say isn't it like even on our relationships speak to your partner yeah speak to your mom yeah, yeah speak to your teacher communication is yeah. key it is same applies to allah mm-hmm. bro just be honest and and just be straight up be in real, it bro. bro sometimes things get rough for me as well and bro i just bro i raise my hands and go allah allow it please yeah yeah allow it innit i've had enough allow me please yeah like i can't <laughs> like it's getting too much now yeah rule talk man. rule talk like we we can barely run our own cruise yeah, our own areas or our own side hustles. Even our own house. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trust like me. Even, even man's own car sometimes. <laughs> man's, got, man's having trouble running it. You get me? Facts, facts. And Allah is orchestrating and con- uh, and has power over everything. Mm-hmm. But come on, bro. You, th- you, th- you think you can't change you, bro? So I, I, I think we've definitely explored some very interesting points. Mm-hmm. Very practical. Mm-hmm. To the point. Um, and inshallah, I hope the people can benefit with with what we've said. Inshallah. And, um, yeah, just make dua. We're, we're all struggling in whatever capacity that we are. Constantly we're saying that you know we're gonna instill change changes in the help of uh, mm-hmm. in the hands of Allah. And if Allah wills, as long as obviously we are willing, also Allah will make it happen. Inshallah. But I appreciate appreciate bro. your time, bro. bro. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Please. Pleasure, man. Come pleasure, on. pleasure. And uh, inshallah, you guys have benefited from that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time, inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.